Almost 40 years ago, it was a prop in a movie. Now it is one of the most grueling tests in the sport of strongman. The size of the implement matches the size of the challenge it presents. 20,000 pounds of steel and wood, 60 seconds of maximum force and pressure. The wheel of pain awaits. The third event of the 2021 Rogue Invitational starts now. Welcome to the second and final day of the 2021 Rogue Invitational in Round Rock, Texas. Three events on deck today, but the strongest men in the world will start by facing one of the most formidable implements in the sport in event number three, the Wheel of Pain. Coming into day two, the strong men faced two events on day number one, the Elephant Bar Deadlift and the Sear Dumbbell Challenge. Event one was all about JF Carone. He put up a winning score of 926 pounds. Only one man was able to finish event two. Alexei Novikov cleared all five sear bells with a time of one minute, 5.74 seconds. After a smooth start, Martins Litsis is your overall leader with 17 points. Tom Stolman and Alexei Novikov both sit two points behind him. Brian Shaw and JF Carone still within striking distance of the top spot. Hi everybody, I'm Sean Woodland with former Europe's strongest man, Lawrence Chalet. Event three, the Wheel of Pain. We're waking them up with a bang. This is all about pain. It's in the name. This one is going to be brutal, and the guys, they are dreading it. It's an amazing bit of kit. I went and had a look at it earlier, and I'm glad to be watching and not competing. <laughs> For the strongmen who have not had a chance to get their hands on this thing, what's going through their heads right now? They're going to be a little bit nervous because this is very different to a push-pull type event that they may be used to. This is an event that is going to cause pain. The lactic acid is, going to, acid is going to build up in the quads. They're going to be fighting hard. It's not too hard to start with, but 60 seconds in, they are going to be screaming. Let's go down to Kiki Dixon, who has more on the formidable Wheel of Pain. Guys, the rules of engagement for this Wheel of Pain are as follows. You've got to keep both hands on the rope portion. You've got to stay facing forward. You can't push it with your back. You can't put your head underneath. There's a couple of guys who are attempting this for the first time in the competition setting, and they're gonna have to adapt to the pain quickly. Thank you, Kiki. Each athlete will have one attempt to turn the wheel as far as he can within the 60 second time limit, and that sounds much easier than it will be to actually do. Event number two is already underway. Mateusz Kieliszkowski is the next man to go, but let's get you caught up with the strong men who have already taken on this diabolical implement. The Wheel of Pain lived up to its name and proved to be a formidable challenge. Jerry Pritchett got past the 50-foot mark on his attempt. You can see the power going into every step he makes. The man known as a Siberian force, Mikhail Shivlikov, would pass Pritchett by five feet. Luke Stoltman fared the best out of the men who were the first onto the Wheel of Pain. He would push it 73 feet, nine inches, setting the early mark to beat. Good distance there, set and by Luke Stoltman. Impressive effort from Luke Stoltman to take the lead. Spicy! Shivlikov, Pritchett, and your current event leader, Luke Stolman, are done. The crew are resetting the wheel. The next man up will be Mateusz Kieliszkowski. After a poor start, he will have some work to do in this event. He finished ninth in event one, putting himself in an early hole. Kieliszkowski knows he needs to step up now. He can get himself into the top five with a strong result here. He's only two and a half points back at JF Corona for fifth. Yeah, I think he knows he's still in with a shot. Yesterday, with the deadlift he knew would be his worst worst day. It's all about climbing back up that leaderboard now. 73 feet, nine inches. That was the last effort we saw from Luke Stoltman. That is the mark to beat for Mateusz Kuliuszkowski. Here we go. Nice low positioning there. Big steps. Athletes have, you know, take a different approach. Some go for smaller, quicker steps. He's going for big, powerful steps on every single drive. Half's working hard there. Glute's working, he's keeping his arms straight out. And if he can keep going, we've seen, no one's managed to keep going without stopping. 
I think Kiliuszkowski has the, the, the tank to keep pushing himself for the full 60 seconds. We'll hit 30 seconds there and he's still going strong. He has already left Shivlikov and Pritchard in the dust and about to pass Stolben. He's slowing down, but he's still moving without stopping. He needs to keep this momentum, keep pushing, keep driving. Look how hard he gets through at 43 seconds now and he's slowing down, but he's not stopping. He's keeping it going. Come on, Kiliuszkowski, keep moving. Legs just stop working. You, you, you want to keep it moving. You want to keep trying, but the blood fills up in there and you just they just stop working. Impressive run by Mateusz Kieliszkowski. He has some momentum right now and looks like he will set the mark to beat with six more athletes who have yet to get their turns on the wheel of pain. One more look at Kieliszkowski's trip around here with the wheel of pain and, and you mentioned it. Really big strides and a great pace to start. Yeah, he's going for big steps. I think we'll see different tactics from different athletes, but these are big, powerful steps. When you have to go early and you're setting the pace, it's tough to just keep going and going, not knowing what the distance is needed. See there, he's still going for the big steps, but they slowed right down. He may have been more efficient to just shorten the steps a little bit. In the end, there's just nothing left. And this is a fit man. When we return, the strongest men in the world get their hands on the wheel of pain We'll find out who has the power to overcome 20,000 pounds of steel and wood when the 2021 Rogue Invitational continues. The 2021 Rogue Invitational on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Rogue. Don't weaken. of pain has got to be the coolest thing that has ever been built for the sport of strongman. It's awesome. It's huge. Very similar to a truck pull or a truck push in the sense that it's going to be an all-out more of a conditioning type of thing. And on the pushing event like this after 30, maybe 40 seconds, the total burnout. It's a strength endurance event, but it's going to come down to will. Well, we did a lot of research on this, and then I hand my pencil sketches over to the experts at Rogue, and they go to work. There are eight 17-foot-long, 12-inch logs that extend out as the spokes. They use sand as a resistance. With the sand partially filling the barrel, every time you turn it, the sand goes back to the bottom, and you never are able to gain momentum. It's, it's amazing how, how much work a rope put in just in one event. There's no way one or two or three guys could have done this. I mean, we've got chainsaw artists, machinists, engineers, strongman, historians. I've never experienced working with a team like this to bring together such a unique implement of strength. It has his name right. It's going to be the Wheel of Pain. Welcome back to the 2021 Rogue Invitational here in Round Rock, Texas. While we were away, two more men had their shots at event number three, the Wheel of Pain. Brooklyn's Rob Kearney would push the wheel 63 feet, three inches. JF Carone, who was the winner of the Elephant Bar deadlift to open the competition, struggled for the second straight event. Carone covered just 29 feet, six inches before calling it quits. That's a disaster there He's gonna Caron. call it. He is not gonna be happy with that. Mateusz Kieliszkowski's score of 83 feet, six inches is still the mark to beat with four men yet to go. Brian Shaw up next. Brian picked up a small hamstring injury. He's still competing, still pushing on. Perfectly built for vehicle pulls and pushes. Yeah, he's getting himself fired up. He wants to perform here. The good news is this event doesn't tax the hamstring too much as well. It's a lot more quad dominant. Lungs, calves. So the injury shouldn't affect him too much other than pain, but these guys can cope with pain. Here yep. goes Brian Shaw. Big strong push to get it going. 
And he has the body weight, he's got the leg strength, he just needs to keep pushing, he needs the endurance. So let's see where he's at, at around the 30 second mark. Working hard with each step. And he's now passing J.F. Carone, creeping up on Jerry Pritchett. So we're at that 30 second mark already. You see he's still going. There's a, little, there's a little more body movement with, with Brian Shaw than some of the athletes. He's not being as effective with each drive of his feet. You look at Kiliskovsky, there was no movement in the hips. Every single time he drove into the four, the power is going forwards. <coughs> Brian still working hard, but I expected better from the big man. He's close to passing Jerry Pritchett if he hasn't already. Upright position now, you lose that power there. We'll have to wait for the official score, but Brian Shaw looking like he at least passed J.F. Carone for sure, and Jerry Pritchett. And now he's the hope that that is good enough for him to pick up some points on the men who are in front of him on the overall leaderboard. Coming up, they entered the day tied for second place in the overall standings. Alexei Novikov and Tom Stoltman take on the Wheel of Pain when the 2021 Rogue Invitational continues. Welcome back to the 2021 Rogue Invitational at Dell Diamond Stadium in Round Rock, Texas. Event three, the Wheel of Pain continues. Seven men have gone so far, and it's Poland's Mateusz Kieliszkowski who has the top score. He was able to move that 20,000 pound mass of wood and steel 83 feet six inches, but three men are left, and they are the top men in the overall standings. This is where things get serious now. It's gonna come down to who wants it more, who doesn't make a mistake, and this event, it's all about who wants it more. Alexei Novikov is now getting ready for his crack at the Wheel of Pain. I believe he's our youngest competitor this week. Amazing prospect. Already he's starting to dominate. This year he's been the most impressive and consistent athlete we've seen almost on the podium in nearly every single show he's done. Here goes Alexei Novikov. He's an athlete with great stamina, great endurance. I believe he's got the conditioning to keep this type of pace up. And this is a great starting pace for Novikov. Just 15 seconds in and he's already passed. J.F. Perone coming up on Pritchett and Shaw very quickly. And slightly bigger steps now. It's slowed down ever so slightly, but he needs to keep working. He's not done enough yet. He's got to keep driving with every step. Shivlikov's mark then. Goes past. He's got to keep working. He sees the markers. Every single step is agony now. You can see the pain there. That speed has come right out of him, but he's still moving this implement. He can see the marker. Judge there, Magnus Ver Magnus, one of the legends of Strongman, pointing out to him that even the great Novikov and his supreme conditioning looking tired there. He saw the mark of Luke Stormer. Does he get past it? That is going to be a close one. It looks like he will be able to pass Luke Stolman for second place in the event. And there is the official placement. 76 feet, three inches for Alexei Novikov. That puts him in second with two men remaining. And here's one more look at Novikov's effort. He came out flying, but as all the athletes have around that 30 second mark, lactic acid kicking in. The body's saying, I've got no more, and he had to mentally push, keep driving. You'll see he almost gave up. I think in the corner of his eye, he saw the marker of Luke Stoltman's, and he thought, I can do it. I can push that a little bit harder to get that extra point. Rolls back slightly, takes a breather, and he just drives hard one last time. Just gets past the marker of Luke Stoltman. Next man up, Tom Stoltman. Second overall coming into this event, but is a favorite to win the entire competition. He's one of those guys, if he believes he can win it, he can. He's just such an incredibly talented athlete. He won a very similar event to this at World's Strongest Man this year. So he's got experience on these kind of events. He's just never been on this piece of kit before. So how does he feel at that 30 second mark when that lactic acid kicks in? Here goes the World's Strongest Man on the Wheel of Pain. And a pretty good pace to start. All the athletes look pretty good at this point. It's when it gets to that halfway point, then we know. 
first target is to beat JF Cron. He's coming up to that now, looking very comfortable. He needs to keep working hard. It's going to start hurting now, and this is where you've got to dig deep. This is where you've got to decide, am I the best in the world, or do I just want to turn up and make, num make up numbers? He's still going strong. He's passing more names here, driving hard with each step. Tom Stolman still going well now, and he's got the big names in sight. Needs to keep pushing. He's got 20 seconds, and it's still moving well. He's not slowing down. There's only one more man to beat now. He's closing in on the top, guys. 10 seconds left Can for Stolman. I think he's gone into number one position. He's got to keep pushing now. He knows Lishis is just coming up. This is an incredible performance from the Scotsman. Tom Stoltman there. Huge performance. Who needs experience when you have the strength of Tom Stolman? It looks like he will be your event leader with one man to go. And I said no one would be turning to the crowd celebrating, but Tom Stockman proves me wrong. The hand goes up. He's stumbling away there. He gave absolutely everything. But that is a massive performance by the current world's strongest man. Just a good, steady pace that really didn't slow when he reached, reached that critical halfway point. He was the only one we've seen so far at 30 seconds, 40 seconds. He was still moving. He didn't stop once. Kept pushing forwards. Did not allow that machine to rock back on him. Fantastic performance there. We've got Kieliszkowski's mark. He goes past it. Keeps pushing even then. That wasn't enough for him. He wanted to really set the pace, knowing that we've still got an incredible athlete to come. 89 feet, Tom Stolten beating Kielich Koski by nearly 6 feet. And he will wait and see if Martins Lietzis is able to get close to that. Stoltman trails Lietzis by 2 points, so he's got to beat Lietzis by 2 positions in this event in order to erase that deficit. Next, just one athlete remains. Martins Lietzis looks to track down Tom Stoltman it's the Dragon versus the Wheel of Pain when we return to the 2021 Rogue Invitational. The 2021 Rogue Invitational on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Ram Trucks, JD Power's number one brand in new vehicle quality. Welcome back to the 2021 Rogue Invitational from Dell Diamond Stadium in Round Rock, Texas. One athlete left to take on the Wheel of Pain. Tom Stoltman just set the top score with 89 feet 3 inches. Martins Lietzis will be the last man to go. He is your overall leader and should have a strong showing here. He won this event the first time it showed up in 2019. He's a very determined athlete, very strong legs, great endurance, does a lot of high rep squats, so he's used to that lactic acid feeling in the legs. Pain is not an issue for this man. He knows how to cope with it. In 2019, after winning this event, Leeds actually climbed up onto it to celebrate. <laughs> testing the structural integrity of that thing. Getting the air in, deep breath. Focusing on opening up those lungs. He knows this is going to hurt. It's going to be painful. Stand up. Ready to go. He's like a sprinter. There's Martins leads. He's knowing he can out waste any time if he wants to track down Stolman and off to a great start. Good, strong, solid start. And he's picking up some pace here. Driving hard as we'd like to see at the start. He's got to keep this pace up at the halfway point. Moving well. 20 seconds. He goes past Caron. Pushing hard still. Slowing down a little, but he's still moving well, and he's got a great tank on him. He keeps pushing. His fitness is very, very good. We've gone over the halfway point now. He's in a good position. He's still moving well. Try, trying to creep closer. Kikilos Koski and He's coming. Stoltman. He's pushing well. This is a great performance. He's coming up with 15 seconds to go. Can he dig deep enough and get that first place? I think he's into third. Into second. Now he's got to work. Ten seconds left. He's pushing. He can do this. He's got to keep working. Drive with every single step. I think he's done it. He's past Kieliszkowski, so that will keep him within one spot of Stoltman, who will win the event. But Leitzis does enough to hang on to the overall lead. Stoltman needed to beat him by two spots. It looked like Leitzis did pass Kieliszkowski. We'll have to wait for the official score, but it did look like he did enough to hang on to the overall lead. Such a the reason he's so dangerous is because there is no weakness in his performances. He doesn't have a weak event. So far, he's not won a single event. 
but he's always there or thereabouts. And he could end up being the winner today without winning an event, which is, it shows the standard that we're competing in right now, that every single event you're getting different winners. And there's the official markings. Leitzi's passing Kuliskowski. Second place again for the Dragon. Tom Stoltman puts up a top score of 89 feet, three inches to take event number three. Martin Leitzi's has another strong finish. He'll take second. And Mateusz Kieliszkowski picks up his second top three of the competition. But this event, all about Tom Stoltman, and he spoke with Kiki Dixon. Tom, congratulations on your event win here. You are fighting with the best. It is a stacked field to play. What does it mean to you to be competing side by side with all these guys? So many titles right here. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I won World Strongest Man in June, and then, you know, a lot of media and didn't perform very well. And then, you know, I had to come back strong and won Britain's last week, and I'm here, you know, fighting. Like I said, probably the best 100% Tom Stoltman right now and uh, proving everyone to like kind of shut up and just leave me get to get on with it because when I'm the best, no one can beat me. So, Thanks, Tom. Thank you very much, too. After three events, it's Martins Leitzis who stays on top of the overall leaderboard, but Tom Stoltman narrows the gap down to one point. Alexei Novikov is third, Mateusz Kierlowskowski and Brian Shaw round out the top five with two events left. The wheel of pain takes its toll, and the battle for the top of the leaderboard has tightened. Martins Litsis has yet to win an event, but his consistency is winning the war. The Dragon is clinging to a one-point lead over Scotland's Tom Stolman. Alexei Novikov remains in the fight after another strong performance, while Poland's Mateusz Kieliszkowski continues to climb up the standings. A grueling combination of implements is up next. The Timber Yoke and Log Medley awaits at the 2021 Rogue Invitational. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.